Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel and today's video we will see basics of Docker. Again, we have downloaded Docker, we understood why we need Docker in test automation and all of the stuff, but we need to uh, understand what is Docker, you know, how that internally operates, right, before working on all these things, right? This is not 100% like you need to know stuff, but yeah, if you know this, it's better that you can imagine and visualize what's happening inside. If you know what's happening inside, it will be easy for you to, you know, work with Docker. Again, guys, don't think, you know, Docker is very limited. You know, it has very limited features. It has very good features. You can leverage a lot of things with Docker. So we'll see about that, in, you know, uh, in detail in this particular video. Good. So uh, before proceeding, like we have downloaded the Docker in the previous session, right? If you notice, uh, this is the you know whole system that we have. So we have a physical infrastructure that is already ready. I have my own laptop. You have yours, and we have an operating system on our laptop. Yes, I have Windows in mine. You may have Mac or Linux in yours, and we also need a Docker container engine. In our case, it's Docker. So we downloaded the Docker, and we also understood if you don't want to download Docker, we can also use Docker Playground. And we also see about how we can uh, do the sign up for the Docker Hub in the previous video. Now, all these three things are ready. Now we want the top layer. So each of these boxes here, right? So these are all containers. So again, containers are a lightweight VM, right? You can consider them as a virtual machine. Again, in this particular virtual machine, you can have only one application. This is the main agenda. Just imagine in this particular virtual machine, you can run only one application, okay? We will see. Again, guys, this is this may not be an exact explanation, but you know this is an correct analogy that you can understand. You know, which will help you to you know understand what's happening with Docker. Good. So now, if you notice, we have container engine. We don't know what it has, right? So we will see how this uh, you know this Docker engine is uh, structured. Okay. If you notice, we have a Docker command line interface. If you know, this is a client. Okay, and we have a REST API in between the Docker daemon and Docker client. So we have three components. One is client and we have a REST API and then we have a server. Again, this whole Docker engine, this Docker engine is a client server of architecture, right? So, so you know about client server architecture, right? So if you have worked with REST services and you know, all these things, they work based on the client service architecture. So the same way that the Docker engine also works like client server okay so what is server so server suppose if you if you you know install the docker if you right click on the docker icon it will start as docker daemon for you okay this will be continuously running unless you stop it or shut down your machine right so this is docker daemon okay this is responsible for managing your containers if you go to the previous diagram this docker daemon inside this uh, the, the docker engine is responsible for controlling all your containers okay it will manage all your containers okay but where to you know send the commands okay this is not exposed to us okay so to for us the docker client is exposed okay so docker client is your command line interface guys okay you can imagine you can send the commands from your command prompt and this will be sent to the docker daemon in a form of rest api request okay again it will be communicated through unix sockets but that's 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 not going to be you know uh, crux for this uh, video so just understand we have three components we have server we have rest api and then we have command line interface we cannot directly operate on a daemon we need a docker client and this docker client will interact with the docker daemon uh, with with the help of rest api if you are if you have come you know already know about apm then you can imagine you know this is your apm client and you have a rest api in between and then this is your apm server whatever the commands your driver dot find element and the stuff what is located that you want to do it will be con converted in the form of rest api request and then it will be sent to apm server right the same way it works okay so good now we have understood about this if you notice this is suppose your command line interface if i have opened this is my docker client now so now i want to check Okay, hey Docker, I want to know what is the version. Okay, so this is the client. This is the command, right? This will be converted in a form of okay API request, and then it will be sent to Docker daemon. Docker daemon will respond. Uh, suppose this this has nothing to do with the container, right? So it, it so it just displayed me the version. Suppose if I say Docker run busy box, okay, so if I say something like this, it will create a container from my image of busy box, okay? I will come to what is images and other stuff, okay? But this command will do that, okay? Good guys. So now we understood this is the Docker client. This, you know what is the Docker daemon. We also understood what is REST API and other stuff. Now let's go back. We have to understand certain similarities with, you know, our software world and then the Docker world. If we know this analogy, 
you can understand docker very well okay so whatever we call it as a software suppose imagine in test automation we have a chrome browser okay so in your physical laptop if you want to use a chrome browser what you need to do you will download the software so you have a some software that is chrome software right the same way in in docker you you have the software in form of images okay so if i go back to two slides back if you want to create some container like this you need an image you need a software that needs to be installed in this particular vm okay that is what is called as images so you can compare the software in the software world is your images in the docker world right and like so suppose i have a software in the chrome store now i want to download it and then i have to install it and then i have to run it right if i want to use chrome that's what if you have something you know as a, as a form of software you need to install to, and then run it to use it the same way you have something here if i have to run it i have to run docker run and then the image name right so it will create a container for me container is just a instance for it, of your image guys so I, I hope you can understand what it is right the same way uh, you have software you have your code and all where we would maintain you have a repository something like a github right so you maintain all your code in github you have nexus uh, or you have your you know internal private repository to maintain all these things right the, in in software world in docker world we we do all these things in in docker hub okay docker hub is a place where you can find all the images which you can pull okay in, in in terms of software we call it as download we will download the software and then we are running it right that's how we pronounce because we are actually downloading it in terms of docker world we call it as pulling we don't call it as downloading I and mean, you can call it as download but the more technical word is you are pulling it from the docker hub and then you are using it there are certain common questions that's been asked so many times okay what what is linux containers what is windows containers i don't understand where i am running my test this is a common question that we are getting all often right so guys container whatever the images that they are developing right so uh, okay if if chrome you need to use chrome okay you cannot create a chrome image yourself chrome developers have done that for us okay they have done that and then they have given it and uploaded to docker hub okay from there we are just pulling it the base image okay what they have used to create the chrome is is your linux so whatever the containers that you are creating from this particular images are all linux containers okay so normally windows containers will not be used okay unless you test some windows specific application suppose you have microsoft excel which can be only run on windows something like that then if you want to you know ship it you want to test it in docker world then you create your own windows container because to create a windows container you need the os okay so all these things right so so there are certain things i know that makes windows containers uh, you know big in size they are not used much okay whatever the things that we are using in test automation world is purely based on linux okay so if someone is asking you what is the linux plat container platform that you are using you always tell linux okay there are very less chances people like test automation engineers like us will use windows containers so always it's linux okay then so so we have next point right so there are certain uh, you know confusions okay uh, how, how this container looks like how many images are creating you know you know I, I, how many images i can have in a container all these confusions just imagine guys okay you have one virtual machine this is your container okay right is this a lightweight vm right so in this you can have only one image so you can have multiple containers okay from a same image so you can have multiple chrome containers from the same chrome software right i can open multiple chrome tab with just a single chrome application right the same way but you cannot have multiple images inside a container because your container is just a you know running instance of your image right so you cannot have multiple images in a container so these are all certain intricacies that we often i you know Uh, fail to notice right so this is the uh, you know three questions that we often face but uh, you know i just want to cover that but now let's come to the what is docker okay this is the exact definition this may, you know each you know sometimes people may give different explanation but to understand briefly okay it, it is a open platform for your you know, uh, you know for you to develop ship and run your application again this may be in terms of developer perspective so i will change that in terms of test perspective okay in case of test automation we have you know majorly 
two use cases with docker the first one is you have your physical infrastructure but you have your physical test all these things test automation framework in your physical infrastructure but instead of using your you know physical chrome the the, the chrome in, in chrome or firefox inside you know in a physical infrastructure you are you going to use containers okay chrome containers firefox containers with or without selenium grid containers okay so this is the first case so and then in the second case you can you know create your own image the, the test automation framework you can ship it in a form of image so that you can also you know you don't have any dependability for your test so if you don't understand this let's let me explain with a simple diagram okay if you notice this is your docker world okay whatever i have here is your docker world okay in the docker world you know inside docker you can have your chrome firefox you know your selenium grid containers and all okay imagine these are all just a chrome browser firefox browser and grid grid is a selenium grid you can also use grid or you may not use grid we will go to that later point of time but understand you have your automation test in your physical infra infrastructure okay instead of running it on your local machines okay local machines you are just delegating all your tests okay to this containers okay so to the, to the docker so your test will be ran here and the test results will be still uploaded to this local infra okay so this is the whole understanding but in the in the form of second in the second way what you can do you can ship your whole automated test in a form of image and then you can create a container for that image itself so entire thing will be dockerized now okay we will come to this later but just for now you know majorly we are going to see about this at the end of you know this framework sessions i will cover the second way okay this is very very useful the second way even the first way is very useful for us so instead of leveraging or running your test on the local browsers that you have in your physical machines we are going to leverage something inside the docker containers okay so that's what is going to be the uh, you know crux for this entire sessions going forward good so i i hope you all get some clarity uh, about what is docker basics if not please leave it in the comment section we will see if not that's okay we will also see more about it in, in in the coming sessions and i hope you will enjoy the coming sessions guys keep watching testing merry bites and keep pouring your support thanks a lot guys